안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And in today's video, I want to sell you something. I'm not here to sell you an NFT project because I respect you all way too much to do that. And I'm also not here to promote a specific project or a coin because as we have all seen, most of them are scams and everything eventually crashes. What I want to sell you today is a concept. And learning this concept is only going to cost you the time you spend on it. But learning this concept might have a great return of investment for your developer career and your programming journey. That concept is blockchain development. Now, many developers shy away from learning about blockchain development and I completely understand why. I have seen the news. I am aware of the scams. I am aware of the frauds and the crashes and I have lost count how many times we have been approached in this channel to promote really scammy NFT projects. I have seen the NFT influencer scam work behind the scenes. But what if I told you that behind all the frauds and scams and crashes that make the news, there is an amazing technology powering it all. Things and innovation that will blow up your developer mind. Just because technology can be used in a negative way does not mean that we shouldn't even learn how to use it. Let's look at the internet, for example. Really, really awful stuff goes on the internet. Much, much worse than scams and frauds. But that did not stop you and me from learning how to make websites, for example. And I would argue that it's the same with the blockchain. This is why even if all the projects that are going on right now, all the coins that you have heard of crash and burn, the ideas and the tech are here to stay. Even governments from the US to China and banks from everywhere in the world are all looking into blockchain and digital currencies. So welcome to the first of two videos where we are going to become blockchain developers. Please remember that if I mention any cryptocurrency project, that doesn't mean that I'm telling you to buy it. That doesn't mean that I'm telling you that it's a good investment. I am aware that everything can crash tomorrow. Everything can go away except for the ideas and the tech that we're going to discuss. All this information is for educational purposes only. Do not put your hand and money on any project without doing your own research. I am not telling you to buy anything today. Just learn, not buy, learn. And thank you to All That Note for sponsoring this video. If you don't know what All That Note is, it's okay. We're going to talk about them later in the video. Now let's get started. As always, we have to start at the beginning. And at the beginning, there was Bitcoin. The easiest way that I found to explain Bitcoin to developers is to say that Bitcoin is just a distributed database. That means that it's a database that is replicated across computers all around the world. And all these computers have the exact same copy of the information on that database database. The Bitcoin database is just a bunch of records of how much Bitcoins people have. That's it. If I send you a Bitcoin, there is nothing actually being sent. The only thing that happens is that on the database, the owner of the coins changes from my name to yours. Done. Because databases are easy to modify and everybody has a copy of this database, people could make changes to the database into the records that are not true. To stop people from changing the database in ways that are not honest, the creator of Bitcoin chose a data structure that makes our database append only. That means that people can only add information to the database, but they cannot edit or delete anything from it. This data structure is a blockchain, which in developer speak, you can imagine that as a linked list. A linked list is one of the most basic data structures. It is composed of items, also called nodes, and nodes have two parts. One is the data inside of the node, and the other one is a reference to the next item on the list. In the Bitcoin world, a node of this linked list are called blocks, like block chain. And the things inside of those blocks are records of the transactions of the Bitcoins changing hands. That's it. For a deeper explanation into blockchain, please watch these two videos after you finish watching this one. In these two videos, we go into much, much more detail about blockchains and who can modify them. So to recap, Bitcoin is a distributed database. The data structure of this database is a linked list and the nodes of this linked list hold data about who has how many coins. And every new node in this linked list, every new block in this blockchain creates a state transition that updates the database. Done. Bitcoin from the beginning was created to be internet money, something to make payments with a cryptocurrency, nothing else and nothing more. But thanks to Bitcoin, many people fell in love with the concept of having a distributed 
public and append only database. And they felt that this idea not only could be used to keep in track of how much money people have, it could also be used to keep track of other values, any value. They also believe that it should be programmable. That means they believe that developers should be able to run code on top of it. This means that they took the ideas from a public distributed database and they transformed it into a public distributed computer. Now, this is when Ethereum comes in. Ethereum is not a cryptocurrency. Ethereum is a public distributed computer. The Ethereum computer has a state which is what holds all the data. Think of it like a RAM, random access memory in a normal computer. The Ethereum state can hold any kind of variable with data types like booleans, strings, arrays, maps, among many others. This state is replicated across thousands and thousands of nodes on the Ethereum network. And just like Bitcoin, Ethereum uses the blockchain data structure to change state. Each new block in the Ethereum blockchain changes the state of the computer, making a variable go from true to false or adding or removing items from an array, for example. But who is the one adding and removing items from an array? Who is the one changing variables from true to false? Are humans doing that? No. Unlike Bitcoin, where humans are the ones that trigger a state transition when they send coins to each other, Ethereum allows its state to be changed not only by humans, but by code. There are two kinds of types of accounts in Ethereum. One is called an externally owned account, and this is an account owned and controlled by a human. The other type of account is called a contract account, and this is an account controlled by code. And this is when finally we as developers have something to do. Using a contract account, the ones controlled by code, we can use this distributed global computer to deploy our code, hold the values of our variables and run our functions. Ethereum is basically a state machine and we can use our code to modify and create data on this state. And that state is replicated across all the nodes in the network all around the world. Now tell me this doesn't sound cool. And I know that now you have developer questions such as, for example, what language does this computer understand? Where does the code actually run and who runs the code? When we write the code for a contract account, what we are doing is we are writing a smart contract. When you write a smart contract for Ethereum, you can do so in a variety of language, but chances are you're going to be doing that in a programming language called Solidity. Solidity is a programming language that you will be able to read, write, and understand in less than 10 minutes if you know any other programming language. It's super simple, and as a spoiler, that's exactly what we're going to be doing on the next video. If you like the idea of writing our first smart contract, then please leave a like and subscribe to this channel so I can make the video quicker. Like and subscribe is just two clicks. It's free for you, but it helps me a lot. After we write our smart contract in Solidity, what we do is we compile that smart contract to byte code. This byte code will run inside of something called the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM. If you are familiar with the Java Virtual Machine, JVM, then understand that EVM will be super easy for you. The EVM is running on each node of the Ethereum network. All these nodes are running the EVM all at once. And if somebody calls the code in our smart contract, the node will run our code and verify it all together, like a global computer. The EVM is necessary for compatibility reasons. If we didn't have the EVM, then developers would have to compile the smart contracts for all different platforms. Instead, our smart contract code can run on any node, on any operative system, as long as it has the EVM. So to recap, Ethereum really is a globally distributed computer that can hold our state, run our functions and keep track of our data, just like a RAM would do. And this computer also has a virtual machine that is running on every node in the network. And we can write code for it. The kinds of applications that this allows us to write are applications that require a high level of trust, transparency, and verifiability. After our smart contract is uploaded to the Ethereum blockchain, no one can change it anymore. And now I'm sure you have the question that I had when I was learning about all this. The question is, if Ethereum is a globally distributed computer with an amazing virtual machine, what is Ethereum doing in the cryptocurrency exchanges? 
if we buy Ethereum, which again, I'm not telling you to, but if we buy Ethereum, what are we actually buying? The EVM and Solidity allow us to do things like, for example, a for loop. That means that in theory, a developer can write a program that runs forever, that uses infinite resources bringing the network down. This could be done on purpose or by accident, but nevertheless, it's something to protect against since the network is running everybody's code. For this reason, if we want to run our code in the Ethereum network, the EVM will charge you a fee for the computational operations that your contract needs to run. This fee is called gas. And like a car needs gas, your smart contracts, your code also needs gas to be able to run. Now, different operations have different prices in the EVM. For the add operation, the EVM will charge you three gas units. And for the divide or multiply operations, you will have to pay five, for example. The smart contract is going to run for as long as there is gas on the tank. So if somebody writes a for loop that runs forever, it's actually not going to run forever because the gas of the contract is going to run out. To buy gas to run our contracts is when we need to use the cryptocurrency called Ether. And that is the one that you and me can buy on the exchange. Because of this gas idea is why the EVM is known as a quasi Turing complete. It's Turing complete, but it won't run infinitely because it will stop the moment the gas runs out. Now, I think that this gas idea is a very good way of stopping bad code from running forever and killing the network. But it's also when the problems with Ethereum start. Gas fees. In the past, when many people used the Ethereum network at the same time and they wanted to interact with contracts, the gas fees skyrocketed. For example, when a super hyped NFT project was launched, the network was so congested that a user had to pay $3,850 on gas fees to buy a $275 NFT. Now, I know this isn't good news for you if you were thinking of building an application for the Ethereum blockchain. No user is going to pay thousands of dollars to interact with our code. The Ethereum team is aware of this and they are solving the problem, but also are many other teams. Projects like Clayton, Polygon, Avalanche, Moonbeam, Phantom, Fmons, among many, many others have been created to solve the problems that Ethereum has one way or the other. They all have their own blockchains, different networks, different parameters, different ways of doing things, but the good news for developers is that they share one thing in common and that is the EVM. Because the EVM is such a cool idea and because there is already a lot of code written for the EVM, all the projects I just mentioned brought the EVM to their blockchains so developers can easily move their code to the blockchain that has less gas fees and faster confirmation times. The future, in my opinion, is multi-chain and we as developers need to be able to talk to a multiple amount of blockchains. Maybe a government blockchain, a bank blockchain, a public blockchain, we should not marry a specific platform or blockchain, we should be able to talk to them all. And this is when the sponsor of this video comes in. I have never taken any sponsorship from any crypto project because I love you all too much to sell you an NFT. Now, all that node is not an NFT. They are not selling a coin. They're actually selling you nothing. Their product is for free. All that node is developer infrastructure for the blockchain. As you saw before, there are many, many blockchains and we as developers need to be able to talk to them all, which means that we have to run a node in our computer for every blockchain that we want to interact with, or we can use all that node. All that node is an API that connects you to a multiple amount of blockchains without downloading anything. Only by using a URL, you can interact with all the networks I mentioned before. They also support other blockchains like Solana, Celo, Near, Cosmog, Agoric, among many others, and they're adding networks to their platform constantly. The best thing of all is that to interact with all of them, all we have to do is go to all that node and get a free account, which is something that you can do right now. In the next video of this series, we are going to write our own smart contract for a fundraising application like Kickstarter or Wadis, but on the blockchain. And we're going to use all that node to deploy our code to multiple chains. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like this content, if you want to support the channel, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Let me know what do you think on the comments of this video. I'm going to be looking at them right now. Thank you as always for watching. Stay happy, stay free. It's Ginji. Hamza. Yeah. San Angelo, see you on the next one. Bye bye.